Yesterday, only a month after the season finale aired on Disney+, Plus, we got the news that anyone with a working brain should have been expecting. Disney and Lucasfilm have canceled The Acolyte. It's over. Despite the fact that even just a few months ago, they were in discussions for season two, they saw the viewership numbers, and they said there's no possible way we can renew this thing. It's over. It's done. This is after it received the lowest audience score of any Star Wars project in history. History. And it was also after the viewership numbers were finally truly revealed and the entire world realized what we'd been saying the entire time. Nobody tuned into this. It had the lowest viewership of any Disney Star Wars streaming series we've ever seen by a big margin. But somehow, the people that wanted it renewed, the people who said, this is just so incredible, it's just racists and bigots and haters that don't like it, they had a complete and total meltdown, very predictably, on social media. These are the same people that have gaslit themselves into thinking that pronouns in bio weirdos, people that only care about identity politics, people that have trans flags in their name, all these different people out there, the weirdos and freaks, they had gaslit and convinced themselves that they're actually actually a big part of the fandom. The reality is this show was made specifically with them in mind. It was catering to them. And the reason no one watched it is because not a whole lot of those people actually exist. And the people that did give it a chance overwhelmingly despised it. But this is kind of to be expected for this group of people, for them to have meltdowns like this. They are mentally ill, most of them, even self-admittedly after all. Now today, what I want to focus on, as opposed to the Disney Star Wars fan meltdowns that we've been seeing, I wanted to talk about the media, because the mainstream media are the people that ran defense for this show. They're the ones that tried to gaslight everyone and convince everyone that it was a rating success, when in fact the numbers were plain for anyone to see if you actually dug into it. It was a catastrophic failure. You've got the Mary Sue with Rachel Leishman gained a few pounds there. Disney is happy to let the toxic dude bros win, I guess. If anyone thinks that Disney canceling season two of The Acolyte is they really want to appeal to this side of the aisle, this side of the fan base... No, they did it because no one watched it. They did it because they spent $180 million on this, and they can't afford to spend more. What about here? The Acolyte's cancellation is a huge mistake for Star Wars. What are we even doing anymore? Now, this is on Mashable. I wonder why they think that it's so sad. Here we go. The loss of the Acolyte is also a blow to its audience, many of whom, like me, saw this series a way to reconnect with a franchise that had otherwise lost their trust and interest. Whether people were seeing themselves in the Acolyte's diverse cast or rejoicing in Star Wars actually embracing an enemies-to-lovers romance, it was a joy to watch viewers geek out every week over the show's every big twist and turn. And then who did they blame for the cancellation? Fans that didn't like it. We see it's something interesting here. With both the Disney Star Wars fans and and in basically every single article we're looking at, they might be mad at Disney for canceling it. They might blame all the toxic fans out there that didn't like this pile of garbage. The only people they don't blame are the showrunners that made this pile of shit. What's the next one? Here on Autostraddle, Disney cancels the first Star Wars show made by a lesbian. Here's why that sucks. That headline's pretty clear as day, isn't it? The Acolyte was critically acclaimed and beloved by fans. Disney canceled it anyway. How do you keep saying this? How do you keep saying it's beloved by fans? Now, you can make all the excuses in the world. Oh, it's just review bombing. It's just those people review bombing. If there really are more of you out there, and all of you were advocating to give it a five-star no matter what, no matter what, go and give it a five-star, counteract that quote-unquote review bombing. If that was true, then why is it at 18%? The reason is that it wasn't beloved by fans. A small handful of fans? Sure. Probably beloved by a small handful of fans. That's not enough to make a series successful. Disney canceling the Acolyte sends a bad message to the entertainment industry. Um, no, it doesn't. It sends the message that if a show is shit, you shouldn't order more shit. I think that's pretty clear. What about Pink News? Queer representative Star Wars series The Acolyte canceled after breaking streaming records. Breaking streaming records? This is, again, the media that told all these lies to convince people that it was a success in the first place. Just like the first day numbers that came out, which were not impressive, but they tried to tell you they were. Then when we finally got the full context, we realized, oh, 
This is actually significantly lower than the premiere of Ahsoka. That's not very good news. Then they tried to tell you it was dominating the streaming charts, when in fact, it fell off completely the streaming charts for several weeks. It didn't dominate them in any way. It was the least viewed Star Wars project of all time. They tried to use an analytics firm that doesn't actually factor in just the people that watch it. They factor in who's talking about it. Engagement on social media. If you have a dedicated small group of fans out there like the Acolyte fans who are tweeting 100 or 150 times a day about this show, and then you also have the vast majority of people tweeting about it, making fun of it, mocking it, shitting on it, that counts as engagement, not as people watching this series. No one watched it. That's the problem. And really, the best headline, I think, comes from Hollywood in Toto, and this is the correct one. Corrupt media couldn't save the acolyte from cancellation. Reporters said not to trust our eyes and ears in defending Disney Plus dud. The media are the only ones to blame for anyone being surprised by this. They are the ones that gaslit people, that attacked fans for months and months on end, that labeled you racist, labeled you sexist if you didn't like this pile of shit. And over and over again, throughout all of these different articles, kind of the same thing is repeated. It's racist and sexist that don't like it because it's led by a woman and there's people of color in the cast. Well, one, there's been women and people of color in Star Wars since its first inception, and no one had a problem with that. And two, look at some of the other massively successful streaming shows like House of the Dragon, uh, led by women, plenty of people of color in the cast, gay characters, all these things that you said everyone's review bombing it for, yet... That show was a streaming success. That show didn't have these mass review bombing campaigns out there. Maybe, just maybe, the mainstream media is to blame for lying to everyone to protect this series because it has identity politics that you support. Not because the show is any good, but because it has the right agenda. That is the fucking problem. That's why people don't trust the mainstream media anymore. And that is why so many of these woke outlets are also having a meltdown. Just like these delusional, deranged Disney Star Wars fans who believe that their small, tiny, tiny fragment of the fan base that is not significant in any way, that has no actual buying power. That's why when a show that was specifically made for you comes out, it ends up being a catastrophic failure, both in audience reception and from a viewership standpoint. There's no actual argument with this. You can say you liked it, and that's fine. I agree. There's some people out there that did like the show. The vast majority of people did not like it, and it had the lowest viewership numbers of any Disney Star Wars show ever. Bottom line, you can't fucking argue that. You can bitch, moan, and cope all you want, but the truth is, this show didn't deserve a second season, and I'm glad that it didn't get one. What do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comments section below. Smash a like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications, share this video out there, and I'll talk to you later.